Yeah. 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 Yeah.
consistent, consistent sexual intercourse with that person. It's always about sex with a Saturn being. And a Saturn being always finds something wrong with how you're treating them. You feel what I'm saying? That's the thing about a Saturn being. And they always want to argue. If you see yourself in a situation where, damn, you always trying to argue with me. You, you, as soon as you come in this house, you want to argue with me. Every, every chance you get, you're trying to argue. You're dealing with a Saturn so being. So what the Saturn being is, you know, and I'm astrologist, what it is, it's like a test yes. of your Saturn return. Yes. It's a test you. It's a test you. Okay. It's a test you. It's I the, understand the that. woman in the red dress. Okay. You know what I'm saying? The test you. Who gets the most attention, you know, trying to use the looks to Jezebel. Exactly. Similar like that. Exactly, basically. And for and for a woman, it will be an incubus man trying to trying to seduce that woman. Exactly, exactly. It goes vice versa for a man or a woman. Now this brings me back to the original topic on getting rid of those cords. Once you get in that bath for a long time, you wanna go ahead imagine your self the cords loosening. You want to imagine all the cords loosening, softening, because some of those cords have veins on them. You know, those are not regular soul ties. These are cords with veins on them. You know, it's, it's crazy. It's like an alien movie. Mm. So once you get in that bath for that hour, you get out, you want to get your blade. You can use your demon hunter blade like this, or you can use an obsidian blade. And then you want to run it across your body. You want to run it across your body like this. Mm. This makes sense because these are actual real spiritual cords. So using a knife to cut them off. Mm. And you don't forget to do the crown chakra. Yeah. And release the top one. And what kind of blade is that, Hazel? This is a Damascus steel blade. Mm. Damascus steel. Gifted to me by my brother Soul, you okay. know, we call this the Demon Hunter Blade. And this blade has uh, <laughs> definitely cut a lot of cords. You know, being in the music industry, you can get cords attached to you all the time just by the energies you walk into. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a, lot, of, a, lot, it's a lot of negative lot forces. Of yeah, a lot of negative forces, a lot of uh, negative energy surrounding yeah. in the studios. You know, it's a lot of entities that hang out and wait in studios till an intoxicated person or a person with a low of enough ore field walks in, then they can spirit jump those people. You know what I'm saying? I've seen people spirit jump before in the studio. You know what I'm saying? I see them sitting there, their eyes are on the back of their head or they talking some gibberish. Those people have been spirit jumped. You know what I'm saying? Now more than ever, we're in the times that these spirits and these negative forces are running the planet rampant and they're trying to lower people's vibration and aura field so they can jump in their body yeah. and take over their vessel to their own will. Because some of these entities never existed on the physical plane. You know what I'm saying? So they don't even know what it's like to be in a vessel. They don't even know what it's like to feel pleasure in different things that the human experience is capable of. So a lot of these entities will do anything they can to get inside your body and commit crime. Wow, that is crazy. Mm -hmm. Now, when you when you do when you put up the bath, right? What temperature do you do you put the water at? Um, I like to have the water hot, but not too hot. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like I know, like a lot of ladies, I know y'all like hot showers, hot baths. You know, us fellas, we don't like hot things too hot like that. So, um, I say warm, hot, but not too hot, but like more on the hot warm side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you want to have it hot enough to where when you put the herbs in there. You want the water to still break down some of those those metaphysical properties that the herbs, uh, you know, right. so carry. Right, so it can boil like a tea. Exactly. Basically, you're creating a big tea, you know what I'm saying? And then you're going to get inside of it, you know? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, okay. taking tea through the skin can affect the body in many different ways different than ingesting. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Taking tea through the skin can really directly affect the aura. Yeah. You know, and directly affect those cords on you and directly affect... There's many different things and many different herbal teas you could take for different things. Yeah. Even somebody dealing with skin issues could take a, a bath with sehaw. Sehaw is a leaf herb that contains an actual spirit. It's called sehaw. Wow. It's S-E-W-H-A-W, sehaw. It's an African herb that the indigenous people of that, of that tribe, they say it carries the actual spirit. And I've actually worked with sehaw pretty closely and curing somebody of uh, autoimmune skill, uh, autoimmune skin illness by taking baths of dead sea sea salt mixed with sehaw. 
Very powerful. Wow. Mm. Mm-hmm. And tell them why, Hazel, why you don't take a spiritual bath every day. Yes. Now, you don't want to take a spiritual bath every single day. It essentially is similar to you working out the same muscle group every single day. You know what I'm saying? And, or you getting inside the water and letting your skin get soggy. You know, you taking a spiritual bath every single day can also damage and compromise possibly some of the cord that you don't want to cut, like your ancestral cord. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's why when you do cord cutting, you do want to be very intentional on what cords you plan on cutting because you don't want to connect the cord, disconnect the cord that's from you to your mm-hmm. ancestors mm-hmm. because then you'll have to reestablish right. that cord. This is what and we it, don't talk about. And a lot of people don't talk about don't that. Talk they just about. talk about cutting cords, but they don't talk about being careful on cutting and on not cutting cord that you don't want to cut. Right. You can cut a cord with you and your child. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to be very mindful of how you're cutting cords, when you're right. cutting cords, and be intentional right. on when you're doing the cord cutting in right. general. You have to know what you're doing. When you have to know what you're doing. Stuff. 100%. Yes. 100%. So, you know, it's very powerful, though. Yes, you know, sir. when you do it right, you can tune into a lot of powerful energy that's literally here for your body to you know, absorb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Any, any topic. Well, what element you feel like? I like a natural spot. I could just go up the dome. What element you feel like the most powerful element? Water, air, earth, or fire? Um, honestly. I mean, there's nobody wrong. Either. Yeah, because, you know, fire is very destructive yet elegant. You know what I'm saying? And beautiful. I've worked with fire in my altar. Uh-huh. And I've been able to manipulate fire, you know, and practice my pyrokinesis. You know, by imbuing my chi into the fire, like the way that you can fire bend, there's ways to fire bend without having an actual fire source present, but it requires a very high level of chi mastery and breath work mastery and being able to move your chi through your hands immediately into very dense vibrations. And those very dense vibrations can cause a a ripple, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, causing basically a high vibrational uh, electric shock yeah. and I can then put something on fire you know what I'm saying if yeah. you know how the, the mastery of that but um, you can f- practice your pyrokinesis by just moving the chi through your hands while fire source is lit like say if you got a candle that's lit you can practice your chi warm your hands up you know what I'm saying get the chi flowing through your hands you know you rub them together you know warm them up warm them up get the chi flowing you know and then you just you know Move your hands over the sheet, I mean, mm-hmm. over the fire. Practice the pyrokinesis until you see the flames start to shake, jump, move, you know, and then that's when I knew that fire was a very powerful element. Yet, you can do these same forms of mastery with all of the elements, you know. One of themselves can be the avatar if they choose to, you know, divide their mastery in all the elements. Some people gravitate towards you know, more of the fire or the earth or the air or the water types. Yeah. Because, you know, like you said before, not only are not only are our astrological signs tied back to an element, but our blood types are also tied types. to yeah. an element. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Me having O blood type, yeah. I'm naturally a fire, fire. type. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then my moon is Aries, which is also fire. fire. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got a lot of fire in me. Yeah. You know, so fire is one of my favorite ones. But yeah. at the same time, you the fifth element, which is the ether, is you know truly the most powerful element of them all because with the ether, you can now manipulate all the elements. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You got fire, earth, air, water, and ether. And ether, and ether is space. Yeah, ether is space. You know what I'm saying? That's soul energy, that space. Mm. That, you feel what I'm saying? That's cosmic energy type shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know the mudra for that. Well, it's, um, What's the mudra? It's, 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 it's oh, yeah, it's, it is this. This is the space. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. the mudra. Yeah, this is the mudra. Isn't it crazy how they took the space nigger and made it negative? Yeah. So I don't do that as bad. And if we, if we do negative things behind it. Yeah. Using it for like money. Exactly. Price, you know, yeah, that's real. Spreading positivity. That's real. That's real. Yeah. So um, as as form as you know, when it comes to the uh, uh, chakra work, what chakra do you notice is closed a lot when it comes to most spiritual people? Um. Most spiritual people usually have their solar plexus chakra yeah. closed, right. you know, because they move through the other chakras, but the solar plexus chakra usually is the one that's closed in, in the, 
your average spiritual person could have a closed or a very slow turning solar plexus, you know, but once you master that, you unlock that, then it goes into the sacral chakra being closed or slow yeah, because people feel guilty. People feel guilty or people don't know how to control the sexual energy. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? When you like become spiritual. World, right? Yeah, when you become spiritual it's like you know what you're doing now. So it's like the energy starts to come towards you or if you're a male you have all oh, these spiritual daddies like you know spiritual vibes you know <laughs> and you get on that and then next thing you know you on that and then the goddesses they yeah. are the spiritual men and then you know you it's crazy. still yeah. yeah it's still a I lot mean, of like, since it's spiritual it's gonna bound me Not exactly I'm, I'm spiritual i'm free and i'm gonna go live <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly i don't drink or smoke or i don't drink so or do drugs so you know it's like yeah. it's always a balance to everything because you know at the end of the day you know you can practice Harnessing that energy, you know what I'm saying? Harnessing that, that sacral energy and using it as creativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you can harness the sacral energy and use it as, you know, manifestation power. You know what I'm saying? Like some people like to, some women actually masturbate and upon orgasm, they manifest what they want yeah. while they do it. You I know, know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then they, they pull it in with that sexual energy instead of them. That's how a woman can rejaculate. You yeah. know what I'm saying? They can re ejaculate and pull that energy. They can masturbate, think about what they want, think about what they want to manifest, and as they orgasm, that energy gets snatched down through their right. portal. Now, let me ask you this. As controversial as, as it is, a lot of people, you use that, but a lot of times they'll say that that energy can control you because it's single sexual. It can control you. Oh, yeah. Because it's, you know what I'm saying? It's the most powerful energy on the planet. It's yeah. That, you know, sensual energy. Yeah. What do you think about that? I agree with it. It's like it's like on um, the Doctor Strange movie yeah. when he was playing with that book, and then his fingers start turning black, and he start, you know, getting. Did you see the, the new Doctor Strange the multiverse movie? When they came out three years ago. Oh uh, yeah, 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 like three years ago. He started playing with that book, and then as he was playing with the magic in the book, his fingers started turning black, and his mm. his, his, his he started looking like on yeah. that vibe, you know. It's but it was powerful energy. Well, it's about the evil Doctor Strange. You both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Once they start playing, like even when the, the good one, when he started playing with it, he, his fingers start turning black. But he woke up out of it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He, you know. But it's the same thing with that sexual energy. You know, it can consume you because it's pleasure at the end of the day. It's pleasure. This is one of the most sought after pleasures that the human body can experience. It's is sexual energy. Wow. You feel what I'm saying? All the entities, a lot of extraterrestrials. They are very in envious of humans because they can experience that. And they can't. They, they experience it differently. You know what I'm saying? Some of them just reproduce. Like, ah, they reproduce. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They don't have emotion ties to it. Yeah, yeah, the emotion, the love, and the right. sexual pleasure, bro, is in the human is unmatched. Wow. Yeah, and we also are the only beings that have the ability to travel into the astral plane and then come back into our bodies. Wow. That's We're why, tethered. That's why they don't like yeah, they don't like humans because of that. <laughs> like, we can literally tether ourselves to this world and then go experience another life in a different multiverse in an astral plane and then come back to this body all within one night. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. A lot of these beings are stuck in the astral plane or the fifth density or sixth density. They're stuck there. You know what I'm saying? They can't, they can't really get into our dimension. You know? Mm -hmm. So what else, what else, you know, on the other side? Um, I know for sure they're jealous of the way that, um, yeah, really just the way that we, you know, some of them are jealous of the way that we feel, you know, we can just feel, like you said, like we feel emotion, we, we feel, emotions, yeah. yeah, we feel different things and different ways and stuff, you know, by, while at the same time we have extraterrestrials that are very uh, protective over yeah. us, you know what I'm saying, and have had small influences, influences in us over the millennia. Since the beginning. Of Since time. the beginning. So let me ask you this. Um, you know, so the extraterrestrials, they, they, um, that's what I'm talking about. Keep going, man. Yeah. Yeah, man. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of different types of extraterrestrials mm -hmm. out there. You know, you got benevolent ones, you got non benevolent ones. They've been in contact with, you know, Earth mm -hmm. since the beginning of time. You know, and that goes into the dragons. You know, the dragons are actually some of the oldest, most ancient beings that exist in mm -hmm. 
the universe, you know, uh,